Hi, I'm Laura Jane Wright, and I'm excited to be introducing King Lear for the Shakespeare 2020 project. For me, King Lear is a play about understanding, about listening. Many of us will have an image of King Lear in our heads, an old man crowned with flowers shouting nonsense into a storm. But Lear himself is not the only character struggling to understand the world around him. The play opens with Lear bequeathing his kingdom to his three daughters, if only they will tell him that they love him. His youngest, Cordelia, refuses to speak her love on cue, arguing that her father should already know. And with this small act, Lear's world unravels. He wants concrete proof of something, love, that can never be proved. And when he doesn't get it, he is utterly lost. Look out for moments of confusion as you read. It's a play which messes with the senses, which makes us as audience members or readers question what is happening before us. The famous Dover Cliff scene in Act 4, for instance, is all about the tension between believing what we are told and trusting what we feel. Gloucester, who has been cruelly blinded and wants to end his life, is led to the top of what he believes to be a cliff by Edgar, his own son, who is in disguise. Gloucester isn't sure what's happening. Why isn't the ground getting steeper? Why can't he hear the sea? But nonetheless, he jumps from what he believes to be a cliff top and simply falls a few feet to the ground. It's a moment which for me captures the panic of King Lear, the lack of knowledge, the fear of senility, the doubt of not knowing one's own children or ever really knowing what is in another person's mind. King Lear is a brutal play. Two of Lear's daughters, Goneril and Regan, diminish and dismiss their father and blind his loyal supporter Gloucester in one of Shakespeare's goriest scenes. Gloucester's own children echo this betrayal in a subplot. Edmund, Gloucester's illegitimate son, turns his father against his brother Edgar. But it is also a beautiful play, almost painfully beautiful. We have the riddling language of King Lear's fool and snatches of folk tales woven into the dialogue. As Edgar says, Child Roland to the dark tower came. His word was still, fie, foe and fum, I smell the blood of a British man. There's a sense of fairy tale, of unreality, and we feel this even at the very end, when for a moment, as Lear howls for Cordelia, it seems almost possible that by some miracle or magic, all will be well. Of course, all is not well. It's also worth paying attention to the world itself as it swirls around King Lear. We have a lengthy storm scene in the middle of the play, one which sees Lear raging against the wind, with his beloved fool, a kind of court jester, at his side. Rumble thy bellyful, spit fire, spout rain. It's painful to watch a man who was king and who has given his power away scream into the storm, a symbol of his utter powerlessness now, as he puts it, he has become a poor, infirm, weak and despised old man. The fool, with his usual mix of clarity and confusion, simply sings, though the rain it raineth every day. Finally, King Lear is a bit of a textual muddle. There are substantial differences between the folio and earlier quarto versions of the play, even down to their titles. Are we reading the tragedy of King Lear or the history of King Lear? Possibly as a result of revision, there are two endings too, or rather a minor difference in the endings which has significant consequences. In the folio, the final lines are spoken by Edgar. In the quarto, by Albany. As you read, think about what difference that makes and who you think should have the last word. King Lear is a play that is all about struggling to make sense of the world. It's heartbreaking and brilliant. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do.